Now what they do to pedophiles in the big house? Okay. Sank them in the shower and turn their pee into wine. That's what they do. Take a selfie. Of yourself. <laughs> The Morning Stream. How about a booby? All right, we're back, everybody. That was cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. Maybe... Every once in a while, Dream Pop uh, just does it for me, you know? Yeah. I think it's a cool little subgenre. Mm -hmm. Would you call it that? Mm -hmm. A subgenre? Is that what you call it? I would. All yeah, right. not quite alternative, not quite pop, but uh, Dream Pop. Dream Pop. Mm, that'll sound good. I'll have a dream pop mm -hmm. and uh, an orange sickle. Cream sickle. Cream sickle. Or dream sickle. It's been a while. I don't really remember mm -hmm. what that stuff is. Fudgical. <laughs> a fudgical, yeah. That's when's the last time you bought anything from like a guy in an actual like little, uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, in a, an ice cream truck. Yeah, an ice cream uh, truck. It's been, because he used to come down our street when Tristan was a kid. It was perfect. Like yeah. As soon as Tristan was too old to want that, yeah. he stopped coming and thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been what like 15 years oh, probably well see yeah never know could change tomorrow could happen could. again uh <laughs> all right we're gonna oh i'm gonna do this so no one can see the link because i get in trouble for this i'm adding bill to the call okay you know him as bill duran yeah and uh quite familiar you're familiar with his I'm work familiar he shall have things to say as we all get together, I can't find his thing. That's fantastic. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. Let the children make it themselves. Can you tell us when you're going to make your move? Maybe I'll make it with you. Hey, everybody, make way for Willie. Make way indeed. Not only is it Willie, but his camera's on. What the heck? <laughs> what? We can see Billy. I can see I you. Have, I stole my wife's computer. Ah, very nice. You oh, sound nice. like you're on the moon, though, that, uh, that <laughs> microphone. <laughs> what are you going to do? Reporting from Kandahar, it's Bill Duran. <laughs> I can see the sun from here. Hello, and welcome back. How are you? Oh, we're doing great over here. That's good. Got a, bre got a breakfast smoothie. Uh, yeah. 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 Nothing wrong with that. Everybody All could... fired up. Yeah, it sounds okay. Well, uh, what's your what's your shirt say? Make, fail... What's the third thing? Oh, make, fail, fail make, fail, make, make. Fail. Oh, make, fail, make, fail, make. So It's a process. Yeah. Yep. You finally, when you really make it, you really How make it. How do you it. make a fail? <laughs> Well, Brian, you 3D print it as, as often yeah. as you can until you get it right. Jeez, hey, yeah, uh, have... how how is your? You, didn't you have a project going on recently, Brian? That you were working oh, on? Me? Yeah, yeah, the Pro Mega. Still working on it, although I have um, I've been so busy with other things and getting ready for my trip that I have not um, had a chance to do the next thing, which is going to be to take one of the Z Rail sliders completely off, resand it, re uh, smooth it out, and yeah. then rethread the um, the belts back yeah. through it because oh, that's yeah. like an hour long process, and I'd rather you know do the freelance things that make money. All you, all you, uh, you just said sliders and made me hungry. Uh, Bill, <laughs> let's talk to Bill. Bill, yeah. you've been yeah, uh, uh, Bill. a regular uh, Tuesday fixture here on the show, and today is no different. Comes on the show, talks about making stuff, how to make them, how to do them, and some of the ins and outs of running the kind of business he does. I wonder what you've brought today. I made something. Let's see it. What'd you oh, make? Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. I I made the, uh, um, actually, when when I saw the trailer oh, this for, is the thing, isn't it? for Venom, yeah, I made the tube that the symbiote is in, the, the goo, right? Yeah. Oh, it, it's like, like it's containment. Like, it's containment yeah, little, holder uh, right. unit. <laughs> Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is and cool. And it pulses. I love the fact that it, like, throbs. And, uh, oh, this is so cool, man. Dude, what? So, um, originally, yeah. I built this thing uh, last week so that you could reach from behind and puppet the creature part. So, it is uh, the creature. The symbiote is made from cloth and latex rubber. Yeah. Um, so, I built all of that. And then this week, I was like, hey, what if I put a motor in that? So, of course, there's a pair of videos up on uh, PunishProps.com if you want to check those out. But uh, I upgraded the mechanism. I, I did a bunch of 3D printing, and I uh, uh, got a motor. I got a motor controller, and we made it so that the, uh, the creature can animate all by itself. That's really right. cool. What's the creature made out of? Because it looks 
It looks, you've convinced me into making it look like it's goopy. What is that? Yeah, so um, it's a stretchy fabric and it was covered with uh, all kinds of things to make it all textured and like kind of crumpled up and folded a bit. And then we brushed several layers of uh, latex rubber on it. So it's liquid latex. <laughs> uh, it's la liquid latex brushed on lots of different colors and it makes it shiny and stretchy and rubbery. It's pretty cool. Interesting. Look at that. Really cool. And it, so I, it, the movie's not been like super well received, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, it's it's fun to watch you you know like lock in on a thing about it that is cool and then make a right. thing that makes everybody even even if you hated Venom it's easy to look at this and go oh I totally want one of these you know yeah yeah, yeah. where we do you, had, uh, where do you get this giant tube by the way sorry I just noticed this quick tube <clears throat> where is that do you just get any, can you get that anywhere yeah it's a hardware store thing yeah uh, you can just go buy them there what people normally use them for is for like pouring. Uh, concrete to hold up a deck or something. Oh. I, I guess. I don't know. Right. I use them because they're really giant tubes and they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Uh, anyway, sorry. You were you were going down a road there and I cut you off. Continue. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. So we went to upgrade it and I uh, figured out how to build like a cam into it so that just some, some uh, uh, cams on the cam shaft as you call it yeah. when okay. they rotate they change how far away they are from the creature and and uh it looks like it's moving kind of crazy that's clever wow uh, yeah. that's really awesome dude so, that's so cool where, where so we, we decided yeah go ahead was, yeah more, just one more little little more technical thing yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we put a speed controller on it uh so there's a knob you can turn up how fast it moves and we put a motion detector on it so it doesn't move until you go over to look at it and then it starts moving. <laughs> oh, that's what? so cool. What? That's super awesome. Now, where will we? where is this going to be seen? Where are you going to have this? Are you going to take it to a uh, con or something or where are we going to see it? I was thinking of putting it uh, in my bathroom and then when someone sits <laughs> down, it'll start moving. <laughs> it's a great idea. That's, a, that's an awesome yeah, it's probably idea. A little, it's probably too big to bring to BlizzCon. Are you coming to BlizzCon, by the way? Are you going to see yes. there? Yes. Yes, okay. we are. Yeah. That's Do you have any kind of cool surprise plan for it, cosplay-wise or anything? Um, yes, but we haven't started, and we only have two weeks. <laughs> and I, and I have to go to TwitchCon, so I probably won't have anything new. Ah, uh, well, that's yeah. too bad. Yeah, that's, you'll decide at the last second that you're like, oh, let's make something really quick, and it'll be four nights before, and you'll do something that'll be rad. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to see if you fly. I want you to fly with uh, to anywhere. Just get on a plane, and just tell me what TSA is like with this freaking symbiote thing. That's oh yeah, I no kidding. I think, I think probably people would a Patreon level would be chip in for an airplane seat for the Venom <laughs> tube and just have it on the seat next to you on the plane and just yeah, uh, not even in a in a bag. Just just put it right. on the. Oh, uh, right. On the, just on the seat, yeah. On like, the X-ray thing on the way in, just set it on the <laughs> thing and it just runs right. through there. <laughs> oh, look at this. There's something about sawing through these tubes that I find hypnotizing. I don't know why. That's my ASMR, you guys. I found it. It's cutting through tubes. Well, oh, we found it. Yeah. Next time I have to manually cut through giant tubes with a handsaw, Scott, I'll <laughs> give you a call. All right. Come on over and do it for me. <laughs> you let me know. That would be fantastic. All right. Well, this is, this is great. You guys can check this video out now at PunishProps.com uh, or head on over to the YouTube channel, which you should already be subscribed to. If you're not, you should and uh, check out this build it's pretty rad uh you always leave us a little tidbit though what is it uh, today yeah mm -hmm. um i was looking for something to share and i'm stalling right now because i have to find the video uh, -huh. uh <laughs> i had a plan but then someone in the chat reminded me that i made space helmet visors for adam oh. savage oh. Oh. i saw that, that, that's i haven't cool. seen the video but i did see that you did this this is so cool so i'm pulling an audible that is the new uh that is the new thing for this week and i'm grabbing the link right now so i can share it with you sweet so um adam made a spacesuit for uh comic-con there's a link drop a link in the chat okay. if you look go to youtube look up adam savage aces spacesuit he uh commissioned a lot of people to help out with this project and uh Brittany and i made the visors for the helmet and of course we're gonna have a video on the whole build oh yeah of course Wait, you are no of course i already made a video and it's up right now yeah no that's there awesome i forgot 
We did a lot last week. <laughs> You're very busy, busy kids. So this visor thing that sh that went up just now that he pulled up, that's what you guys did that? Yeah, the visor on the helmet. So there's there's a, a tinted version, I guess, to protect the astronauts from the sun. Yeah. And then there's a clear one on the inside. So we had to make a pair of visors for the helmet. All right. And this is one yeah. of those incognito Adam things where he goes around and someone has to try to figure out who he is, right? Yes, that's the deal? exactly. That's what All right. they did. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Well, space is cool. So cool. And so is PunishProps.com. So go right. check it and out, they, everybody. And, yeah. Uh, sorry, Tested has a whole bunch of videos, or at least one more video coming out on the build of this suit. So, of course, if you aren't subscribed to Tested already, what are you doing? Get on over there. Subscribe. Yeah, go do it now. You bunch of lazy sacks. Jeez, the exactly. Jesus. Uh, Bill Duran is Chinbeard on Twitter. You can also follow him there and chat with him and talk to him and all that. Bill, take it easy. We'll see you next time. Whoop, he left. He's gone. <laughs> uh, hey, all right. That means... So, so we got video working. We just need to get his audio going. Yeah, that was hilarious. That audio that was... Uh, <laughs> it was really weird. Like It was. I'm not yeah. sure it was set up right, but hey, we'll take whatever we get. Exactly. Um... Okay. Justin Robert Young soon in the, his house. Uh, hold on a second here. Let's get you in the focus. Okay. We're going to call Justin, see what's going on. There's a lot to talk sure. about in his world, certainly. There always is. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But first, we play this. These are their stories. Do, do, de -de 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 -de. Oh, I'm terrible with names. Hey, it's Justin Robert Young. Someone in the chat room just says, yes, my jury fix. Captain mm. Kipper really looking forward to his jury fix. You're like a drug. He's like snorting you off a, a hooker's bum. People people get in the shakes when you're not here, apparently. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about that? It has oh man, I love it. I love being I love being in your veins. Yeah. Uh, Coursing and, and through our veins. And, and swirling and yeah. having a great time. Do you got like a club going on? What's what's the flashing? For what whatever is... reason my backlight yeah. decided to turn on the disco <laughs> mode. <laughs> Oh, I see. I see. I kind of like it. It does feel like you're in a in a there weird we uh, thing. Uh, I do Justin, like how, it, how it how it looked though. I was, I was actually kind of yeah. kind of cool with it. We I missed it. If you turned it. off the white overheads and just had that on, I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, there you go. Hey, we missed you last week. Uh, it was our fault. We had problems, but we fixed them. And uh, now you're back. And uh, uh, it seems like you had a nice time in Vegas. Went to that Scoops Fest. That looked that looked fun. Best I could tell. Oh, it was a blast! Yeah. It was it was a really 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 great show. Um, we had a we had a, we had a good time. Everybody go check it out live tonight. Uh, and that venue, man, I'll tell you what, it's this place called Show Creators, and it is in it is off the strip. Uh, 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 and by off the strip, I mean it's just in a cluster of like warehouses. Yeah. You, you would do like a large drug deal at. Like, not like you know you're selling a little bit but like a lot of drugs like that kind of warehouse but for whatever reason like they built this amazing little no oh. did we lose him uh, he's frozen, he's frozen. And quiet yeah he's frozen hello oh you're oh, back there we go. you're back i can see and hear you guys fine oh. you, yeah, you went frozen yeah, you said they built this place that and then yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounded like what you were describing is like a, a van full of armenians could pour out and and make the, the kind of drug deal you're talking about Sure. Oh, we're back to the drug deal. Sure. Yeah, I don't know why you decided to, to make it Armenians. That seems like a weird, uh, very. <laughs> eh, whatever, uh, man. They're in track suits. I've seen. I've been. I've watched movies. Yeah. I know what's up. This place is really cool. I'm looking at their website. So they they do uh, Penn Sunday School here. Yeah. So uh, and Scoop, uh, uh, the co-host of Penn Sunday School, Matt Donnelly, is one of the guys uh, from Ice Cream Social, which does Scoop Fest. Okay. Uh. But now there's this other set that, uh, well, Ice Cream Social's in there with a studio, but they also did this thing on the on a big performance set, and it was awesome. Uh, uh, so big shout out to them. If you have a chance to go to Scoop Fest, then go do it. And it is the halfway point of my October of con, cons, cons. Oh, good. <laughs> halfway point. Where's Where are you headed next? Because uh, are you going to BlizzCon? BlizzCon oh. in L.A. Uh, this weekend, uh. and then TwitchCon in San Jose the weekend after that. Yeah. Are you going to wow. are we going to see you at BlizzCon this year or no? I know last year was, you know, we saw No, because no. <laughs> I've been doing cons yeah. for... <laughs> That's not part of October, Scott. It's, that would be in November, and that wouldn't be part of October of cons. No, no, look, I would go. Like, I would go to Blizz. I had a blast at BlizzCon. Yeah. 
Yeah. The only reason why I would not go to BlizzCon now is because last year BlizzCon was super fun because I got to actually go to a con and hang with my friends and not be a part of things. Yeah. And now the idea of going to a con as a vacation is something that is not <laughs> in my DNA right now as I continue to do nothing but stack up badges. And uh, and it's great. It's always... It, it's it's really nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to be like, ah, oh, you're so tired from uh, <laughs> partying in Vegas for three days. And it's like, yes, I am. I am very tired from it. It's work, man. I get it. Plus, you went into that with some kind of some kind of horrible chesty, sore throaty thing. Uh, so. Oh we're... yeah, I felt like a, a pile of butts. That. Hey, before we get too far into this, I think I cracked the code. What's the code? Ooh. I cracked it. It's done. Okay. It's over. Okay. All right. I've been trying to figure this out since 2015. Yeah. It's 2018 like, now. We're about to end 2018, and I finally cracked the code. You were like, will there ever be a better movie than Fury Road? And you've finally come to the conclusion that there will not be. <laughs> right? So. Because that's 2015. We had. All right. So I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but our president is, is Donald Trump, and he got elected mm -hmm. uh, with a very unusual campaign. Yeah. And so I've consistently kept trying to think, like, what aren't I getting? I'm not getting something there's some very effective strategy that i am just not picking up on and it's hard to see because it is obviously inflaming the point of it is to inflame partisan uh feelings no yeah. and so it's very hard to look at it as a nuts and bolts thing when everybody is screaming about their own side right yeah mm -hmm. cracked it i cracked it just oh. this morning. This feels oh, this feels well, really important. This like is an exclusive. This is uh, like hot off the hot off the crack and presses. Yeah. Now it's gonna sound a little rambly and conspiracy theory, and I know that I've I've uh, I have this, <laughs> this uh, vocal tick that has a, a Charlie Day esque kind of thing. So there's gonna be a little Pepe Sylvia in all this. <laughs> but so yesterday, Elizabeth Warren comes out with a. Uh, uh, a, a video and a DNA test done yeah. by a professor at Stanford yeah. that shows that she indeed does have a Native American relative anywhere between, and this is according to the to the report, six to ten generations ago, which she says fits about what her family lore was. That there was like a great grandmother or a great great grandmother that was. Uh, uh, a Native American. Right. She wrote that she was Cherokee in some cookbook thing. So uh, uh, take that for what it's worth. But okay. she said that she's not part of a tribe, but that that's where when she was like in college as a law professor, that's why that is. And so that's where, for those of you who don't know why Donald Trump and others call her Pocahontas, mm -hmm. that's, that's where it comes from okay. because she has made uh, a mention of this or, or her Native American uh, a listing in law school was a campaign issue a long time ago and yet she looks about as white as white can get like, I don't know how if you were challenged to say make Elizabeth Warren look whiter like I don't know I mean what would you do yeah. like add a like a cat like <laughs> I, I just put a just put a really really bright spotlight on her I know? think you would you would make her kiss a dog on the mouth like, like you would like have her like lick a dog right in the mouth that have would her be walk around with a big white. scarf and a pumpkin spice latte sure that would be it so yeah. she's about as white as white can get right and yet there is this 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 dichotomy so she comes out and she says all right uh uh turns out there's this thing that uh uh you know, I, I had a, a relative six to ten uh, uh, generations ago. Yeah. Now, initially, a lot of people on the right, I'm watching, I'm watching both sides, right? Mm -hmm. And people on the right are like, "What a joke!" Six to ten generations ago, what does that even mean? I don't even know who my family was six <laughs> to ten generations ago, and that means that like she's either one six hundred and something Native American or one. 2000 and something Native American like really is that where the line and the sand is on on uh, listing it in some sort of official registry and on the left it was like ah oh, booyah in your face Trump like uh, you you offered to uh, uh, pay a million dollars if she proved it she proved it scoreboard uh, baby uh, so everybody was really riled up now Here's where I cracked the code. 
And this is where you're going to find out whether or not Elizabeth Warren has a really good shot to be president in this country. Yeah. Because this is the Trump playbook. Yeah. Give something, some or something that your enemies can make fun of you for. Yeah. Or uh, 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 progress right to fatalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you've done it enough times, then the fatalism comes in of like, nothing matters. Yeah. The thing I used to joke about now apparently is a law of the land. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, or on your side, you make everybody jump up and down and, and be excited. Something to fight for. Yeah. And more than that, something and this is where like like the the underscore donalds of the world something that now you know the other side is mad about or laughs at and you can just say to their face and now immediately you get this reaction because they've had this relationship with this truth so if elizabeth i think elizabeth warren needs to drive right into this she's found that two quadrant issue that is that is the same thing as it's the wall it's it's uh, a, a very stable genius. It's 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 all these things, right? All these big issues. It's kafefe. It's it it, it it it's whatever whatever we have seen, right? It's a lion Ted, little Marco. Mm -hmm. These things that on his side, it's like hi, ah, called him a name, like good. And and uh, on the other side, it's like oh geez, are we really in this country so <laughs> uncivil that we've now resorted to name calling? Like <laughs> this is it. The all all I know is that my assumption of whether or not Elizabeth Warren is going to be president is going to depend on whether or not she content she comes out. She goes to Congress in a in a full feather headdress, <laughs> like. <you> know, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I want this to be a thing. It's not going like, to happen just, though. Just go, just drive, just just uh, steer right into the skid, basically. Yeah. Because <laughs> by the way, the Cherokee Nation came out and said this is insulting. This is awful. You should like this was this was a really gross thing to do. If she apologizes, it's it's over. You mm -hmm. that's the one thing you can't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't apologize because now you've invalidated it for your side. Yeah. Your side doesn't get to do doesn't doesn't get to do the meme your side doesn't get to to trigger the cons like uh uh, uh it, it, it's it's imperative that now it doesn't matter whether or not it matters now i have a grander theory as to why this is the case yeah uh that i think dovetails out of something i've said on this show prior okay that there's no more thing as a monoculture there we used to have common culture we yeah. don't anymore yeah we used to have the same television we used to have uh, radio stations that in general would play about the same thing we used to have common genres we don't anymore right there's just two there we, we can do exactly what we want so why is this strategy resonant not because we're a more crude people or the world's going to hell or whatever it's because there's only a few things that can make it if, if we used to be in Pangea and now we are in Continental Drift, mm -hmm. doctor's into this one. Uh, <laughs> if we used to be in Pangea and, we, and now we're in Continental Drift, there's only a few strategies that can traverse all the islands that make it. The word makes it from one side to the other. Yeah. I think you're right. Oh, I'm so bugged by this because here's what this means. If this is the... I, you're not necessarily suggesting this because things swing different directions and you know they can go they can go real far one direction and, and then real far the other direction at a drop of a hat um but in this case let's let's say it's just specific to elizabeth warren or anyone who wants to challenge trump in 2020 they are going to have to go against type and play that game or else there's no mm -hmm. there's right. no winning it like if they want right. to beat him let's say it's um Joe Biden, because he's been talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if he's going to do this, he has to basically be, and maybe he is one, <laughs> and this is just a chance for him to let it out, but he's got to be a giant dick. He's kind of right? got to do the, uh, you know, no more rallies. It's the uh, stand-up comedy tours. Yeah, know? basically. And uh, but he has names to, for no, everybody. No, 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 no. You don't have to be a dick. Again, it, that, this is not about being uncouth. This is about making bold 
proclamations that play either to or against your type. Yeah. And whether or not they make sense. In fact, it's better if they don't. It, it, it is a benefit if the logic doesn't totally connect. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you could, if, if if Joe Biden came out and and just all of a sudden started calling everybody in 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 uh, the Democratic 2020 field clean and nice, the thing that made him leave in 2008, yeah, and he was just like, ah, oh, you're clean and nice, and you're clean and nice, we're all clean and nice. <laughs> And all of a sudden, all of his opponents are like, what? That's gross. And it's it's, it's echoing of this racist statement. But all of his people are like, ha ha, remember? <laughs> yeah, remember that? And he just goes right into it. You have to go right into the eye of the storm. And just, it, it, it it's about conversation. That's it. The only point of this strategy is that you are the most talked about. Because we don't have any kind of star making vehicle anymore that can effectively turn a nobody into a somebody yeah and even if you could nothing organically uh, beats the conversations that we have online you have to manufacture the new mainstream and to do that it literally just means conversation Sidon had a great point here i don't know how a squabble let me see if i can quote him accurately I don't know how a squabble about somebody's uh, somebody's heritage is something that really matters. That's the point, yeah, baby. Yeah, it's no. not. It's 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 something that is a political <laughs> point that at some point she was going to have to defend or understand that to have a defense to it because people were going to bring it up. But it doesn't matter, and yet we're talking about it. And to understand the gap between those things is to understand the new Justin Young strategy of how to win in power. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but I kind of think you're right. And I've thought about this a lot. They're going to have to, I mean, what you're saying, if you boil it down, is they just have to play, they have to play the game like Trump's playing it. And I'm not even saying he's doing all that much work to play it. I don't think there's a rule book. I don't think there's some strategy in his mind. I think this is just how he is, and everybody can strategize around it, and it's worked for him for a lifetime. So it's just built into him. And he just does it. If they don't play some of those same games, it's just, just going to look terrible. Like, mm -hmm. like everybody, the Kavanaugh thing is a really good example. Everybody was, in my opinion, rightly pissed that uh, the GOP seemed to be uh, turning that thing into a circus and telling people that uh, the Democrats were nothing but a mob and, you know, really relegating a, the only other party in this country into a category of, of you know, criminals this is essentially what they were painting there now some people say oh they are I, okay i get it i get that there's opinions around this but my point is we were just so by, by we those who were upset about kavanaugh were so just offended and so pearl clutchy and so backed into a corner that they forgot that they're just gonna get, that's just gonna get used as another thing to make fun of and rile up the base and so everybody's like Oh, the best thing to happen to the midterms is this Elizabeth Warren thing and the Kavanaugh hearings. It's really boosted us because you all act like freaks and it just makes us all want to make sure we vote. Like, they're just going to do that. So quit doing the whole victim -y thing over here. I'm not saying that people, I'm not talking about Dr. Ford here. I'm not saying don't play the victim. That's not what I mean, just to clarify. I think she is a victim. What I'm saying is, as a whole, people who are opposed to Trumpism need to quit acting like they're being... Uh, victimized every single second of the day every time he says a word and instead just play that same game that's what you're suggesting right well again for good or ill what, what, what i'm what i'm saying is not necessarily about being uncouth or about not believing in people's feelings now i do think that it is about having a thick skin and understanding that the noise will get loud around you right that the, you are going to have to go into the eye of the hurricane for it to work effectively. Uh, but the issue that we have in front of us is not about whether or not Trump's policies are good, not about whether or not he's mean or or, or too mean. Because I don't think that this is about necessarily being uh, uh, cruel. Uh, I, I do think that it is about being aggressive and sticking to your guns 
and understanding that if the other side is laughing at you, you're winning. Mm. Yeah. Like like that 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 means that you are that it, that you are are taking this or at least it they can laugh at you and you can still win. Because the only thing that matters right now in this world is when we are only a pizza gra- or a, 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 a rat grabbing a piece of pizza and dragging it down the stairs away from everybody forgetting about what you just said <laughs> is staying at the forefront of of, 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 of people's minds. Yeah. Now, yeah. the question is exactly how different this is from politics before, which I think it's probably less different than we are thinking because we tend to romanticize our nostalgia. But I do know this, like whether or not I, I, I'm more on your side, Scott, that I think Trump is more of a savant in than he is a master craft 4D chess. No, he's genius. just a natural ass. He's a natural ass. Well, you- beyond, or yes, and uh, I think that it's not about him being an ass. It's more about him understanding that, and possibly the microcosm of New York City and the media landscape, that that's, he's more used to living in that world. And maybe the world that we are living in media-wise now is more like a macro version of that micro than it has ever been before. And not from the sense that the New York media market is now the world's market, but rather everybody is Donald Trump, a guy trying to get into the news. Yeah. And he was very good at understanding what somebody's going to find newsworthy. And part of those traits have been inherited by the social media world, wherein that's what get that that that's what gets traction. That's what gets hashtags trending. That 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 that's what gets memes made. Right. Yeah, this is all true. I just feel like we've been just falling for it for too long. Like we're just we got to stop falling. This, again, for this. this is not about him. I know. He was no, just I know. The guy to do it. So it's like this is not about falling for anything. This is about understanding where we are. There's no. I mean, like we we always want to acknowledge that we're in a different place when it's in stuff that we can that we like and understand, right? Like I think that we've made tremendous strides in our culture over the last uh, two years, let, let alone ten years, let alone fifteen years. Everything is different. We know that everything is different, and yet we want to think that there's some noble, there, 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 there's some nobility to like ah. But but when the most learned man or woman wins the battle of ideas, that's when we'll crown our our leader. Mm. It's never been about that, but now it's just a very different thing. <laughs> and I cracked the code, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. You did. I feel like this I is an did. important day. It's an important day. I guess what I mean by falling for it is, okay, here's just one little note. When he says- Are you fighting in the chat? No, I was, because someone's being dumb in there. Um, <laughs> but here's what I was going to say. Uh, he, uh, For a guy who says the press is an uh, enemy of the people, fake news, fake news, fake news, it's all bull crap. <laughs> he loves the news. He loves the press. Because they're oh, another, yeah. p- another target he can yell at and rile up, yet he'll still show up for his 60 Minutes interview. He'll still show up for his his uh, press event where he says a bunch of really weird stuff and then leaves and then complains about the press later, uh, but then loves to get him back in there and talk to him again. And if the opportunity's right, he likes to deny one person a question because they're with a they're part of the narrative and he can talk to somebody else. New York Times. Like it's just yeah. it's starting to become so predictable that I just am I'm a little annoyed at myself and others for falling for this for this bull crap. It's all bull crap. It's well. All right. I mean, there, there, there's it's a not conversation to, we can it's have a about whole separate what, thing. All, yeah. all political messaging is bull crap, right? Yeah. But like, number one, uh, Trump loves the press. I mean, uh, 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 did you read the New York Magazine article with uh, written by Olivia uh, Nuzzi or Nutsy? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? What is the Oh, the one where she it's had the little personal sit down with him or whatever. Yeah. I didn't read oh. it. No. That's him. That's 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 Donald like the the the, the Donald Trump that you read in that article. Who is like, hey, I heard you were writing a story. I want to tell you personally, this is not true. Uh, 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 and also, look, uh, uh, there happen to be other people here that are going to also tell you it's not true. But playful, joking, collegial, remembering little details about her career or her or her work. 
answering the questions that she does give him. Now, whether or not he gives great answers, that's up to you. That's him. He loves the press. Yeah. Loves the press. Now, his base doesn't. His base thinks they're biased. He probably thinks they're biased, too. But he thinks that they are people who are doing a job and understands and has understood pre-politics. That it doesn't matter. He loves it when the columnists, columnists can make fun of him. Columnists can call him a weird, desperate, old creep, yeah. right? As long as they both understand that when Donald Trump calls again, that story gets in there too. Mm -hmm. Because he gets his name out and Donald and, and, and the columnist gets to write things that people will read. Their careers are benefited from it. And I don't think that, that, that that's this sounds more cynical than I believe it is because I think that there's a reality to access journalism, which is anything that the person says that uh, uh, is on the other side of that wall is news. So I don't blame uh, uh, New York Magazine or, or Olivia Nuzzi for doing it. I think that it's it's fine, but like understand that like he's calling these reporters off the record. He's he's bringing these people in and having these conversations constantly. No, he freaking like loves his it. number one press antagonist theoretically is Maggie Haberman, who apparently is his favorite thing. And he said the other day that he reads the New York Times and he and he loves it, you know. Uh, but but that's. He likes fighting with them because fighting with them is right now in our current culture something that people want to see. There's one side that says, again, this is the duality. One side wants to say, journalism, oh, if there's a free speech, if there's no free speech, then there's no free country. We're becoming uh, the, the, the 1984. And the other side says these people have been biased for years whatever who cares like i don't i don't want to shoot reporters in the face but if, if the new york times crashed and burned tomorrow i wouldn't lose a wink of sleep we're yeah. talking yeah because we have these are these are well-worn divisions that now are inflamed on both sides right and i you and you've cracked it that's the important thing you've cracked it Nice job. I cracked it, baby. Nice job. No, Everyone can retire from this. We're all d good now. We're all good now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I've enjoyed our reunion here, to be able to just come back and bring Jerry in and have him have, him have this amazing moment of crackage. Is, uh, I've, we've seen your crack. We've seen thanks your for, crack. Yeah, exactly. Justin, thanks for bringing in your crack. Yeah, thanks for showing I, us your I crack. I cracked it. I... I, 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 I I think I, I think well. This is also the angriest I've seen the chat in a while. So maybe I don't know whether or not I'm doing something really wrong or really right. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of uh, stuff going on in the chat room. It's fine. There, we we got we got an instigator. It's fine. Plus, I'm I'm feeling a little testy today, so I just asked him to email <laughs> me because then we can talk like real people and not in public. How about that? Uh, all right. Well, this has been great, as always. Uh, Justin R. Young going to be found this weekend where? Twitch, not TwitchCon. What is it this weekend? Politicon. Politicon in Los Angeles. I'm not doing any panels, but I am selling the contender. Uh, uh, so come on down there, buy a contender, get yourself uh, some expansions. And, uh, of course, I'll you know, we'll sign anything if you want. But um, it's uh, it'll be a great time. And then, of course, TwitchCon the week after that. Uh, but if you want more politics talk, uh, politics, politics, politics is the podcast, and free political newsletter is the newsletter. Awesome. And uh, Justin R. Young on Twitter, of course. And uh, he'll be back next Tuesday because we like doing this. Justin, have mm -hmm. a fantastic week. I hope you feel better, too, by the way. You're dumb yeah, cold. man. Oh, I feel like a million bucks. Oh, good. Well, then <laughs> send us about 25K of that. That'd be great. We'll see you later. Right. Bye. <laughs> Well, we'll uh, see. I don't know. Do you do you know what's happening Tuesday? <laughs> I don't know what's happening Tuesday. Oh, you're yeah. I got to figure that out still. Yeah, we'll figure that. out. It might be him. He might be my co. -host. He might be the whole Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't and talked then, to him. And then the anger in the chat room. Woo! -hoo! Oh boy, can you imagine a whole day of that? That'd be good stuff. <laughs> um, all right. What are we doing now? That's it. Oh no, we have this email. Thing. Oh, we have emails. Yeah, yeah lots yeah, yeah. of emails. This Love is going to be a beast. Somehow I've closed the notes, and I don't know why I'm out of the notes. Oh, um, I've closed the notes, and I don't know why. You other brother can't deny. Let me get back in said notes. Okay, that's really weird. I don't know how I closed that, but I did. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a little bit of a marathon here. 
Okay. And by marathon, I mean quick. So it's probably the wrong word. What's a what's a <laughs> word for running fast? A sprint. Quick fire question. Quick, quick fire emails. Quick fire emails. And uh, we even have a little theme for it. Um, let's see here. Is it this one? No. Oh, yeah, this one. All right, time to rip through these emails as nice. if our lives depended on it. I like to catch up on some emails, and here's one from Sherat Rowan, who wrote in and said, The UK and their complicated addresses. Although I no longer live in the UK, when I was growing up there, it was said that a letter could be addressed with just the house number and the postcode. So, uh, example, three, and on the next line, NW89AY. Should you get your letter in the Abbey Road Studios, each postal code covers one street. It is often no, no, no. so. He's saying that that what you just read that three N W eight nine A Y those seven characters yeah. would get your letter to the Abbey Road Studios. R oh, to the studios. Yes. Oh, not to anybody. Because you only need the street number and that postcode. Got it. Okay. Um, Which is crazy. Yeah. He says it's often just one part of the street or even just one building. Wikipedia says theoretically deliveries can reach their destination using the house number and postcode alone. However, this is against Royal Mail guidelines and requests a full address. Uh, who requests a full address at all times? And there's the problem. It's that full address that is so damn complicated. Yeah, and they're nine miles yeah. long. They're freaking enormous. That's right. Um, It'd be nice if, if all we could do, all we had to do is just the street number and the postal code. But uh, no. No. Uh, I'm seriously going to silence like this dude in the chat because he's, he's just pulling everyone's hair. Dude, mm -hmm. I'm silencing you. Email me and we'll talk like real guys, not just some fake dude on the internet. Okay, so here goes. Uh, timeout user. Enjoy your 600 seconds of fun. Okay. Uh, Brian, here's the next one. Hey, Boop and Scoop. Yes, sir. Boop and Scoop. Uh, boop and scoop. When uh, William was on the, the Therapy Thursday last week, this is our uh, blind listener, William, mm -hmm. I felt simultaneously regretful that I wasn't on that side of town that day and ashamed that he was treated that way by the people who were. I live in Portland, and the city, like most big cities, has a large population of citizens who are houseless. I've never heard it put that way. Houseless. I guess homeless I and either. houseless, same thing. That's what they say it in Portland. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> where, where the, where the... Blame Fred Armisen. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it says how we treat them, uh, the supports we've given them, and how our city handles the issue are common topics in the Oregonian and on neighborhood sites like Next Door. I haven't heard of that. Is that a thing that's anywhere? Next Door is what, like... Next your... Door? Yeah. yeah, it's... Oh, my gosh. Are you not familiar with Next Door? No. It, it is a... It's basically like Reddit for neighborhoods. Well, you're kidding. Or YouTube comments for neighborhoods. <laughs> so it's door. like, somebody's dog is barking all night long. Is and it? then you get people like a long <laughs> list of comments on that. I like the sound of dogs barking or shut up and quit your yapping and, you know, stuff like that. And you, can you it do it? Is, uh, you can do it anonymously so people don't know what neighbor you're talking about and that they, sort of stuff? Yeah, you can. You can put in a, your, your, you know, your username doesn't necessarily have to be your real name or your address or anything like that. It's just like... Uh, you know, Billy four one two says your dog is noisy. You shut up. <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna check this out later because that's interesting. But to the me. best, but the best thing is a uh, a Twitter account called Best of Next Door, mm. and what they do is they put the best. Um, that might be the one I'm looking for then. <laughs> that is what you want to see because it is like. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> I love this idea. What is it? Best yeah. of Next Door. That's it. Best of next door, yeah. Best of next. There's door. one I retweeted today that was somebody saying, "I'm looking for a large uh, Confederate flag for a photo shoot," and then the first <laughs> reply is, "You should try looking in 1861." <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'm I'm gonna look at this whole thing. All right, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I never even heard of it. It seems like a neat idea, but now I'm seeing how it's very, it's being used in a yeah, weird Tina, way. Tina pays attention to ours, and that's how she knows that, you know, that Mexican food restaurant that's up the street might be turning into a Starbucks, and mm. and this other thing is like, how come there were fireworks and it wasn't the 4th of July? And Right. Well, anyway, yeah. sorry, sorry, uh, sorry here, Amy. I'm pulling this off the topic, but got derailed from Portlandia. Yeah. Right? Anyway, she says that aside, saying uh, they thought he was homeless is absolutely no excuse for not helping a man who clearly needed help. Listening to this segment inspired me to do better. I love this city like I love my country. No assumptions, but we are uh, that we are all perfect, and I try to take every opportunity to improve it. Thank you for the reminder about the Be My Eyes app. I downloaded it again a few days ago and helped my first person this morning. 
Uh, she just got a skincare set and needed me to read the labels so she knew which order to use them in, which is very important. Uh, thank you both uh, for what you do, and to William, we got to look out for each other in this wind in this wild city. Best Amy in Portlandia. Well, Amy, I think that's rad, and I love emails like that. And uh, hopefully, some of that talk inspired others to to do similar things. I think you have the right attitude, especially in the uh, grumpy sure. grumpy chat room today. That's a good message to <laughs> put out there. <laughs> Debbie Stover wrote in, uh, says, they're talking about Tilly's mole. Okay, I'm going to get called out here. You ready for this? Okay, ready for you to get called out. You know Tilly on uh, the Star Trek? I'm very familiar with Tilly, yes. She got that, that mole She's I the mentioned. star of the first star, uh, short Trek. Yes, that is correct. The first uh, Trek short. Trek short. Short Trek. Short Trek. Short Shrift. Short Treks. Something like that. Crystallines is what they're called. <laughs> okay. She <laughs> says, um, uh, hey, Scott, I just wanted to start off by saying I love your podcast. I started listening to the instance seven or eight years ago to pass the time on my daily commute, and I've been hooked ever since. I feel kinship with you because your ideals are similar on a variety of topics from gaming to technology, politics, and every way, everyday life. I just listen to TMS or I listen to TMS every day and squeeze in some Boop, Coverville, and Current Geek when I can. Anyway, one of the reasons I listen is because you are not perfect. Please don't take this the wrong way. Your imperfections are what make you so endearing. Really? That's fine. Uh, someone asked my wife if that's true. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you sometimes you say things before you think, and usually it's quite funny. But the other day, you were discussing the new short trek for, uh, she calls it short trek also, for Star Trek Discovery on CBS All Access, and you pointed out Tilly's mole. It bothered me a little bit, but I shrugged it off and didn't really think about it again. Today, I was listening to another episode of TMS, and you were discussing the new fall series NBC's uh, Manifest. You made a point of saying that the top network shows all have beautiful people, and you would prefer to watch shows that have realistic casts where the actors were not so beautiful. Well, Tilly's mole immediately popped into my head, and this has been bothering me ever since. Now I That's don't probably want a better way to phrase that. Tilly's mole immediately popped into my head. <laughs> yeah, get that looked at if that happens. Uh, she says, now, uh, I don't mind some eye candy, but I have some serious respect for the non-stereotypical actors like Mary Wiseman, who plays Tilly, because uh, maybe it's because I am a woman... And that's uh, why the comment about her mole did not sit well with me. I just feel like you can poke fun at Tilly's mole, and then or you can't poke fun at Tilly's mole, and then turn around and say you prefer actors not to be beautiful. Uh, I'm sure you didn't think about it and didn't mean anything derogatory by it. It's probably just a mom in me coming out to wag her finger at you because I want you to think about this. Uh, please know that I still love you and your imperfections. I will continue to recommend Frog Pants to anyone looking for great content. Thanks for all you do, but especially for putting a smile on my face every day. A loyal fan, Debbie. All right, Debbie, I am here officially to do two things today. Number one, point out this hideous mole I have right here. <laughs> Debbie, crack the code! <laughs> I hate this mole so much. I want to burn it off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second thing is, I do this with Joaquin Phoenix. It's mm -hmm. it's not nice. I say, I call him, hair, uh, oh, hair lip? You're talking about hair lip Phoenix? It's not nice. He's got a weird <laughs> scar on his lip. That's not nice. It's like the opposite of nice. It's this weird thing in me where like a physical attribute, like somebody walks funny. Oh, old, uh, old. We used to know this guy. His name was Mike back in the day. Me and my friend Andrew knew him. And it didn't matter what kind of pair of pants he wore. When he walked, you would hear it go. It always mm, rubbed like okay. like George Costanza in that suit in that like one it, episode. Exactly. Like, you know, be worse if it was corduroy probably. Uh Start right. a fire, basically. Right. So we used to call yeah. him uh, Friction. Uh, Friction. We just call him Friction. <laughs> That's like a superhero name. Right. So we have yeah. these. <laughs> That's a great idea, actually. Mild mannered, whatever, during the day. <laughs> At night, he becomes Friction. So I do this all the time. Uh, the the Sarah J. Parker, whatever her name is, horse, someone oh, brought up yeah. horse face mm -hmm. thing. Um, we bring yeah. up that what's his name looks like a foot. Um, Pattinson, yeah. Whatever. whatever. Uh, yeah, there, like, there's more. I do I do have this tendency, especially when it's somebody of of prominence or, uh, you know, it's the a famous person. <laughs> Olivia Munn's eyes. Uh, Olivia really Munn's eyes, right? She has dead eyes. We'll, we'll bring these things up sometimes, and certainly I do, and I, and, and I don't want to speak for everybody here, but I when I do it, I don't even think about it. And this that is not a justification. I should try to do better with that. It's hard for me because someone will say, oh, you know that girl on uh, Discovery? I'll go, the one with the mole? And they'll go, yeah, her. Oh, what's her name? And we'll kind of go that way. And I don't even think about it 
that I've brought up the mole. And it's not like she's got some Aaron Neville thing on her face. You know what I mean? But there I am throwing Aaron Neville under the bus. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. I don't know much. Anyway, so what I'm saying is I will try to do better, Debbie. I appreciate you calling me out. I think that you're not well, wrong. I think you're not but wrong. She's, it's, it's not just that she's calling you out on the, you know, oh, she's got a mole and he's got this. But to back it up with, I don't like all the pretty people on TV. So having a show where people have moles and have um, center tooth and horse face <laughs> and weird torsos and milk breath and... Oh, yeah, milk breath. And the center tooth, I forgot about. Tom Cruise has one tooth. In the middle yeah. of his face, and you, I, yeah. I don't. I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. Tom Cruise is a is a billionaire actor who deserves all the accolades <laughs> he gets for his acting. And I don't know. I don't know about his. Forget about his religion for a minute. But all that other stuff, you know, he's worked really hard for it. Right, he happens right. to have a tooth that's like in the center of his face. It's right in the center. And I'm not. But anyway, I think Debbie's point isn't isn't about uh, about you calling people out on their on their. Uh, uh, uniqueness whatever that uh what did she say the things that make you endearing the the imperfections yeah. it's the fact that then you complain about <laughs> about network tv and people who don't have imperfections right she's right she's right that seems counter it seems counter and it, it, it is like yeah. for me to go huh? you mean mole <laughs> right, and, then, exactly. and then on the but other hand I go no uh, people are too pretty on wb shows yeah i get but it. All, all milk breath is is an assumption we don't know that uh, Jennifer Aniston has milk breath. That no, is no, no. totally like, oh, she looks like she has milk breath. Yeah, I see her and go, oh, I'll bet she's got milk breath. And I don't know why I feel that way. I have nothing to base that on, except we did get that email from the guy that used to work for her when he was on set for some. Oh, he was, uh, right, and said that, that we weren't, or you weren't wrong. Yeah, because she drinks a ton of oh. coffee and a lot of milk with her coffee, and she has milk breath. He's like stood in front of her while she was like breathing on him. But that's the point is, you know, Sometimes it's just I get abstract in my head about things, mm -hmm. people, places, mm -hmm. stuff. And like that poor lady that I had the the, the the poo bag laid on the side of her face while we gave him directions. <laughs> right, I don't yeah. call her uh, Maria or uh, Consuela or whatever her real name was. I call her poo bag lady. Poo bag lady. Because. Right. because <laughs> but that's not an imperfection. That's something you did to her. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's still that's me not, showing a lack of. Like, Poo bag yeah. shaming her because I have to walk around with a poo bag on my face. Right. I you can't know. that one you can't really I'm just saying it's complicated. It's complicated, yeah. you know? Like go watch any episode of some show you think is funny or watch a stand up comedian. I mean, aren't they doing that the whole time? And oh totally. Maybe you they're... know, when we get this all the time, anytime somebody sees a bald person uh on screen and and T V movies, whatever, mm -hmm. in a in a meme. Oh, they have to send it to me because remember, looks, I'm bald. Yeah, it looks like Brian. <laughs> you do get that all the time. That's true. I do get that a lot. Yeah. Um. All right. But thank you for that. And I'm I am trying yes. to I'm trying to do better. At the very least, I'm trying to understand uh, the other perspective on this. So thank you, Debbie, for that. All right. Dean wrote in. Uh, we he's from Supernatural. Speaking of pretty people. Oh, good. Well. Uh, not really. He says, "Hey Scott, Listen after hearing week's episode of uh, next week's episode of uh, Film Set. Oh yeah, we watched the Halloween uh, su uh, Supernatural and actually the excited. Bloody Mary episode. Yeah. Yes, I actually really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I may pick that show up again. I really like it. Kind of, kind of enjoyed it too. Yeah. yeah, it's not bad. Except everyone's pretty. Anyway, dear Scott, says Dean, after le uh, hearing you say that 1984 is the best year for movies on the morning stream, I reflexively said to myself, that can't be right." I immediately assume that your assessment was tainted with nostalgia. <laughs> the nostalgia taint. Um, <laughs> don't taint shame, Scott. Yeah, don't shame my taint. He says, uh, now to be fair, in 1984, I wouldn't have arrived in the world yet for another couple of years. So I decided to do a little math and statistics. I looked at the top grossing movies of 1994, which was a pivotal year for his youth, and looked at how they stacked up against the top movies of 84, and it did very poorly. 1994 had some bangers to be sure, such as Pulp Fiction, The Lion King, but on average, the year was kind of weak. Of note is the terabad film The Specialist, starring Sylvester Stallone and Sharon Stone, receiving a 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, he says film sack, maybe? Maybe it will be. Uh, my heart sunk a bit, but then I thought, what about last year? Uh, what about some of the best movies of 2017? Star Wars The Last Jedi, Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Logan, Coco... Dunkirk, Get Out, etc. The numbers didn't lie either. The top grossing films of 2017 
averaged higher on Rotten Tomatoes than 1994 or 84. Sorry. And I kind of agree when you think about it. 2017 is one of the best years I can remember for movies. I would agree. It was a great year. I know. It really was. Yeah. Um, young folks are kind of spoiled these days when it comes to movies, it seems. Regardless, people are entitled to their opinions, and I won't say you're wrong. I just wanted to have a fun, fun with numbers, says Dean. Well, Dean, I appreciate you doing the math for us because I don't like doing math. And um, I all I would say is... I, I, and Brian probably, I, I, I doubt you'll even disagree with this. I just, I think 84 stands tall for a number of reasons, but a couple of them are, yes, we were kids. And so, yes, we yeah. were way into it. And they were all movies that felt like they were aimed at us in a lot of ways. Uh, it is absolutely a nostalgia issue. Yeah. Oh, big time. But then also, mm-hmm. I think there's this other factor. These, these are movies that have stood the test of time and are still part of our popular culture. They still, you can, you, you can find memes every day about, movies that came out then um mm-hmm. they just are st- we're, we're we're stuck with them as a culture for a long long time because the 80s did that it just it was the, like the first time we did that and you could argue that years like 2017 did that better but it's not the same because that came yeah, first i mean it's i think it's because if you ask somebody to come up with a list of their 20 favorite movies from their childhood yeah you'd see how many of them uh are, are were made in 1984 like right. how many of those those favorite movies like oh yeah that was in 1984 too holy cow that one was in 1984 and, and yeah so we just happen to look at that year very fondly as as uh, a year of impression film on our youth and maybe 20 years from now someone's gonna look back at 2017 and go oh my gosh can you believe all the stuff that came I out know that year? well when he went through this list I mean holy cow yeah Guardians of the Galaxy 2 Wonder Woman Spider-Man Homecoming mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok might be kind of might be my favorite Marvel film, oh, yeah. certainly in the top three or four. Uh, or, Logan. you know what? In 20 years, we may look back and go, you remember when we did too many superhero movies? Like, we might say that. <laughs> right. Totally. You remember when Marvel was putting out like two or three superhero movies a year? I mean, look at that. <laughs> Guardians, Spider-Man, Thor, or, Logan. Or we'll say, God, can you remember back when Marvel was only putting out two or three <laughs> superhero movies a year? Yeah. Yeah, good point. Remember when movies used to have something other than superhero movies, basically? Right, exactly. Remember when they were... Right, yeah. All right. Well, if you'd like to be a part of the uh, quickfire read of emails occasionally, uh, or even when we do one or two, you can send your emails to themorningstream at gmail.com, or you can use the website over at frogpants.com slash TMS. There's a little contact link up there. Uh, I want to thank everybody who supports us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash TMS is the place to go if you haven't already uh, to support the show. If you like the show... Even if you disagree with us during the jury segment, it's still a great place to go and show your love and your support mm-hmm. over at patreon.com slash TMS. My voice just cracked. Unless you're that one guy. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he's fine. If he emails me, I'll have a real conversation with him. That'd be great. That's but I right. just think coming yeah, in here. Jury, and- jury, jury points out Black Panther. How come Black Panther didn't get mentioned in this list? And it absolutely belongs in the. Oh, no, that was a 2018. Yeah, movie. that's early this year. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we got that this year. And you also got the other one, the. Infinity War Part One this Infinity year. Infinity War well. Part One. Yeah. If those, it does feel like last year though, doesn't it? That's weird. It totally does. Yeah. I guess it's because it's almost, it's almost gonna be last year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're just a couple months of, away from it being last year. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. Um, okay, that's it. We're done. Thank you all so very much. Uh, let's get out of here. Oh, don't forget to vote for show titles today, everybody in the chat. And if you're here live, frogpants.showbot.tv. Brian, will you play some music now? Oh my gosh, I will. Uh, AC wrote in and said, hello, Scott and Brian. I turn 35 today. Woo! I want to give a quick shout out to Yin's guys, as we say in Pittsburgh, in the tadpool. Yin's have been more family than my own family as I came out as transgender and a sexual assault victim. So thank you. Uh, so sorry to hear about that. Jeez. And so sorry I tripped over that word. Sexual assault victim. Uh, If I can get my request in, I'd like to hear Vashta Narada. I know this has been played on the show before, but just as I'm regenerating into another year, there's a new doctor in town, and I'd like to celebrate her. Thanks, guys. Love you, and S-O-W. S-O-W. Sow? Uh, so. Love so. You and maybe show, and they forgot the H. So. Love you and show. S- love you Maybe and they're show. talking about that big uh, mini horse-shaped <laughs> hog that... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, he wasn't mini horse shaped. He was just big as a mini horse. Mini horse sized. Yeah, mini yeah, horse yeah. sized. Yes. That would be really uh, freaky. A pig shaped like a horse. <laughs> It'd be a horse. Yeah. Uh, so the Vashta Narada, I, I made the mistake before of saying that Vashta Narada was the name of the Doctor Who theme. No, no, no. Vashta Narada were the little uh, microscopic. Uh, uh, critters that made the astronaut suits walk and they can, they oh. can eat a body piranha style right. when they're in big masses. Right. But but in small doses, they're harmless. <laughs> um, and let me second a vote for Jodie Whittaker, man. She I only I only saw the first episode. I haven't watched the second one yet of the new season of Doctor Who. Yeah. But she is fantastic. Oh, well, that's great. Absolutely delightful. Nice. Uh, okay, Vashta Narada, by Traffic Experiment. That's what we're playing. This is a single that was released back in 2011, and I played it before. 